Hi, welcome to the Autonomous Collective on July 7th, 2023. Canada just celebrated the country's birthday on July 1st, and America is celebrating July 14th, Independence Day, or as the British call it, Liberation Day, the day the rebellious child still living at home finally left. Happy 4th of July, America, or known by its other name of the Purge. Some people got off to early celebrations from the nation's capital to Fort Worth, Texas, from Florin, California in the west to the Bronx, New York in the east. The 4th of July weekend in the U.S. was overshadowed by 16 mass shootings in which 15 people were killed and nearly 100 injured. As Reuter reports, Reuters reports, in a separate mass shooting in Philadelphia on Monday evening, five people were killed. Two were wounded, including a two-year-old boy and a 13-year-old boy both of whom were shot in the legs. When a suspect in body armor and armed with an AR-15 opened fire on strangers, according to local police. The Monday night shootings came a day after two people were shot dead and 28 others injured, about half of them children, in a hail of gunfire at a neighborhood block party in Baltimore. There have been 300, over 340 mass shootings in the country so far in 2023, according to data collected by the Gun Violence Archive. The dead ranged in age from 15 to 59. The latest shootings took place around the anniversary of last year's Highland Park mass shooting near Chicago, where seven people were killed and 48 others wound, wounded at an Independence Day parade. A 22-year-old man remains in custody after being indicted on 117 felony charges for the carnage. America, I know that the Statue of Liberty doesn't shine as much as it used to. I know that it's hard living on your own, becoming the supreme wartime leader of the world and finding it hard to mix with other people. However, you have left the nest to hopefully become better than you have been. You have said no to the crown that resides in Britain, but still help out the old girl when you can. Part of growing up is to protect the people you love. Part of growing up is to think things through and critically read what is in your constitution. A well-armed militia as the Constitution states, is not a right to carry a rifle into a shopping mall. A well-armed militia is not a right to carry a handgun to save you from the government. You were a rebellious teenager, but now you are getting long in the tooth. Time to grow up, put that AR-15 on the ground, and kick it over here. There are some people in Ukraine who can use it. We will be right back. Hello, hello. Welcome to the Autonomous Collective, or as we, we call it, a bunch of auto mouses. Uh, we have, uh, Lane's not feeling well, but I hope he chimes in when he can. I'd appreciate that. And uh, we're going to go straight to our, to our, to our chef. Hey there, Walter. Joe from Norway. Hiya, Joe. How are you? Quite well, although I'm a bit nervous now. I haven't heard back from the kids. They're they're visiting grandma in the States. Maybe I should be concerned. Wow. Oh, well, they are getting weapons training from my brother. So weapons training, you said, positive. in a while? Indeed. Indeed. Okay. Well, what kind of weapons? Oh, I don't think they uh, they chose. The, the, the dinner table like this, like I've got this decked out. Just imagine right. it full of firearms. They had a choice. We're not sure. Mm -hmm. Probably well, a, nine, a nine, nine millimeter of some sort. Well, you know. And, that, and then a 222 rifle, something like that. I hear you, man. Mm -hmm. What are you going to cook for us today, Joe? Yeah, well, I thought I'd uh, try to do something festive for this post uh, patriotic uh, shenanigans. I, uh, right. As you can imagine, well, everywhere food is expensive, but particularly in Norway, it's, it's kind of hard to get certain things but we've mm. had uh had cauliflower lately coming in local cauliflower coming in local cauliflower there was what color white or were, green uh, yeah we sort of white greenish on the inside awesome but it's a bit shabby it was uh, cast out they were throwing it away because it didn't have the, to meet the aesthetic requirements so uh, i took advantage of that and it's all very limp so 
uh, that you, you might think that's a disadvantage, but what I'm going to do is liven it up by deep frying it in the spirit of uh, the 4th of July. And um, we're going to make a, a kind of cornstarch slurry that will uh, lightly coat it. And then I'll crisp it up, deep frying it. And uh, then I'll make a, a variety of um, chilies and a sweet chili sauce coated in, uh, in a glaze. Uh, with uh, some toasted sesame, and we got garlic, ginger, and uh, some scallion, and your favorite, a little bit of coriander, oh, yeah. cilantro, and I'll be making some. Uh, first, the, the, the main dish would be the uh, rice. I'll make some coconut rice, and we had a recently imported uh, Pakistani mangoes. These are beautiful, floral, very fragrant, creamy mangoes that um, we have a lot of Pakistani immigrants in Norway. So uh, every season we, we get uh, pallets full of these in town. And it's uh, a lovely little treat. So I'll make uh, coconut rice with um, mango, uh, sliced mango on top. So are Simple. you making this inside the house or outside? This will all be done inside. Okay. Well, my friend, we will let you get started, and uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll check back in with you when we can. Yep. Okay, we'll do. You are a good guy. Let us bring in uh, Professor Ann Lee. Here we go. And before we start, uh, if Lane's still out here, we got a letter from the BBC. Uh, hold on, let me do this. Move that. Because uh, he was wondering uh, if we had copyright for some of the the ones uh, that we used. Uh, here we go. So we, I had uh, Brigosian here. So I'll, I'll read the letter. Dear Autonomous Collective, we have recently learned of your use of Doctor Who characters in your show to describe members of the Russian establishment. Your use of the Sonitarian to describe Perosian is quite apt. <laughs> Your use of the Solarian to describe Margarita Simeon is altogether an egregious error in judgment. The Solarian is a kind and thoughtful creature who has lived inside the Earth for thousands of years. Margarita <laughs> is a slithering reptile who lives on the Earth and does not possess the qualities of a Solarian. We wish to point that out to you. Kind regards, the Beats. P.S. Charles would like to know if Lane is available for tea. So, Chuck. I hope that uh, that uh, uh, allays your concerns, uh, Lane. Oh. And let's uh, let us go to uh, Ann Lee. Hi, Ann. How are you doing, my dear? Good, good. Uh, up, Chuck. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I I see. Just to kick it off, I see. Um, there's been a lot going on in, in Russia and the Ukraine, and I see Bergosian's, excuse me, been spotted in St. Petersburg, where he's supposed to stay in Belarus. We do, we actually sort of don't know where he is. It's actually quite interesting, the kind of information disinformation. Um, apparently, somebody uh, raided his, his home in St. Petersburg. Uh, seized some weapons. I think he has every right to defend himself, but the FSB apparently gave him his guns back, which led some reporters to say that, well, if they gave him his guns back, then he's not in any trouble. That doesn't necessarily <laughs> follow yeah. from that. Did but they the give him his is, gold uh, back too? Oh, I don't think they did that if they found any. Um, oh, okay. Uh, Lukashenko is, has sort of punted, which is sort of interesting. He sort of says, well, you know, we sort of made this agreement, but then we didn't make this agreement. So who knows what that is? The reporting says that they're going to set aside a couple of old Soviet bases for uh, for uh, Wagner, but uh, that's not clear yet, and no moves, no actual moves have been made. I think a lot of it is still simply a, a Russian bureaucracy at work trying to figure out which troops are going to go where. And then each unit has to sort of decide whether it's going to join the Ministry of Defense and get paid less money 
or what? And then there's this sort of vague area of of recruited prisoners who, you know, should or shouldn't be there. And if they've done their six months or their whatever that tour of duty is, um, whether they're going to be released into the Russian population, I, it's unclear whether they can be released anywhere else. So that's kind of uh, weird, too. So it's a big shell game at the present moment. And Prigozhin, um, well, there also are a whole series of heroes of Russia who are sort of uh, major uh, uh, figures in major figures in the MOD who are uh, kind of disappearing, whatever that means. They're just, uh, people haven't seen them recently. So those folks are missing. Uh, it's uh, kind of an interesting situation. The big news today, of course, is cluster munitions. Uh, I put up a thing at uh, Daily Coast about it. It's uh, kind of a big deal today. Uh, you know, even Wikipedia upgraded its uh, page uh, because J July 7th is essentially the day to uh, the 500th day or almost 500th day of the war um, to announce that uh, cluster cluster munitions are going to Ukraine. Now, the, the important thing to remember is that, and, and I, I can describe what went on in today's uh, Pentagon press conference, but the, the big issue is that these munitions are simply being transferred from NATO stocks because they were gonna be used at some moment against uh, the Soviet Union or whatever, and or Russia. Um, and so essentially they're backfilling any perceived shortages in artillery rounds. It seems that most of these are artillery and not high Mars rounds. We don't really know for sure. I think part of it is uh, information and disinformation. Um, largely, th this is the kind of weapon that is used against people in trenches and uh, with respect, this should actually clear lots of trenches if, it, if done properly. So that's kind of uh, uh, you know it, it, most of uh, most of this stuff is I mean this particular round of cluster munitions has been around since the 1970s, and uh, uh, stuff gets old, and it, the technology is changing. The issue for rationalizing the use of cluster munitions uh, by um, uh, uh, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan today was to state that it's essentially, and he didn't say this, but my perception of it is that we are Florida men, whatever that means, uh, that we're supposed to, Ukraine is supposed to stand its ground and we're just giving them weapons to do it. It's a kind of, uh, as they say, a castle defense. And um, right, it's a pure weapon, though, is what the United States says, right? Because the yes. other guys have it, like China and Russia. We get to have it. Uh, Russia, as they the the current image that is floating around Twitter or the inner interwebs, is uh, some the casings from missile launched. Um, cluster muni Russian cluster munitions, and it looks like they've already been used. They've been using a lot of them. Um, the Russians have in their right. initial attack. They they clearly did. It, you could identify. You could actually identify the cluster munitions going off. There's video of it. Right. The point, of course, and and of course, there's there's a couple of railway stations they use this against. It it's just awful to see the carnage. The, the point is that the, the difference between, you know, the Russians and the Ukrainians is that the Russians don't care who they hit. Uh, and in particular, it's much more terrorizing to use these against civilian, civilians. The Ukrainian use of them is going to be largely against these huge defensive networks that they've put up, um, I, I would suppose. Um, and so they're actually going to be used in, you know, military con conflict as opposed to terrorizing civilian populations. The, the remaining issue that underlies all this is, of course, the U.S.'s attempt to sort of thread the needle on this because, of course, millions of cluster-type munitions have been dropped on all kinds of countries from the Vietnam War on. 
uh, the most egregious example being Laos, uh, where they're still demining the country. So that's the kind of concern for folks. And so the, the key um, quantitative figure is the issue of dud rate, so-called dud rate, D-U-D. That is, the, it's the failure rate of munitions to explode upon um, launch. That is, uh, you know, the, a cluster munition is a thing that carries lots of little 30 whatever bomblets. And just before it, it re-enters um, the target area, it throws out um, at a couple thousand feet these little bomblet things and they don't have parachutes or whatever, they just get spread and they should explode on, on impact. Um, sometimes they don't. Now the difference in technology is that old style cluster munitions have a mechanical style uh, trigger to it, pin or whatever. And so that it, it mechanically arms as it's being launched. And so it should explode when it hits the ground. The new ones have sensors, which actually are better because they don't you know, fail. The failure rate is lower. Mm -hmm. So newer cluster munitions have a so-called 1% or the, the goal was to get to 1%. The US actually signs a memoranda to say, well, you know, we're gonna try and get it down to 1%. Um, Technically, I don't think they're real close to it. They, the, the number mentioned today was that there was a 2.5% fail rate or dud rate on the current level of munitions. Now, I don't, you know, do I believe that reporting? Well, you know, if you've got a lot of surplus ammo, the, the older ammunition um, has anywhere from a 14 to 23% dud rate. And uh, um, Advisor Sullivan said that. Uh, uh, the Russians are firing uh, cluster munitions with a 30 to 40 percent dud rate. Right. So it's regardless in a post-war environment, demining is going to be. Yeah, uh, the demining is going to be terrible. Um, I was going to say I have Internet problems today. And uh, could you make me a co-host? I dropped out and came back in. Oh, oh OK. If you don't mind, co-host. No, no, or... no, not uh, not a problem. Right. No. Um. So, so these mines and these these dud mines, they're going to be left over after the war is done, and farmers or kids or something are are going to uh, step into them. But Russia and Ukraine both have used these uh, cluster munitions uh, before, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean. You know, it's the standard kind of uh, uh, armament for mainly anti-personnel. And as I said, the the Russians have developed a kind of three-layer defense network on the south south end or the western side, I guess, of, the, of Donetsk and uh, or towards uh, Zaporizhia. And uh, I, I apologize for mispronouncing these. And, and the defensive network is essentially what's being currently probed. Um, the, the entire war looks, uh, it, it's interesting and there's no Russian advancement. It's all Russian kind of defensive work, kind of waiting for the whatever huge counterattack is going to occur. And I, you know, we're still not really there with the bulk of the, the counterattack. All, they're doing all kinds of other weird cosmetic things. You know, right. they, de they declared a, a kind of new naval headquarters in Mariupol with uh, uh, three, I think they're using Corvettes, not the, car, the kind of wheels, but you know, the kind of miniature frigate, S sub, uh, something smaller, I guess, than a frigate. And anyway, they got three of them in the Sea of Azov and it would be sort of sad to see them sink, but that what, could happen too soon. What about these drones? Um, there were more drones in Moscow? Oh, yes, it's more and, and they're attacking the same places. Essentially, it's they're not attacking really high, well, at least from the mapping of the fires, uh, the fire mapping is, is that it's generally in the western suburbs. Um, um, and if these are terror weapons, they're not huge terror weapons, they're not hitting anything like um, 
uh, tower blocks, as far as I can tell. They're they're generally trying to send a message to the Soviki uh, to you know. I I think they're just trying to needle the um, the Russian leadership and perhaps uh, encourage, as they say, uh, <laughs> Putin to go. Uh, I mean, I would guess that that's what it is. It's essentially, you know, sort of propaganda stuff. I don't think it's being launched from a, a very far distance, um, but pretty much laterally from the other side of Moscow. Now, that's just my guess. But when you look at the patterns, that's kind of what, what it looks like they're doing. They're, I mean, they're loitering munitions. I think they're very small, portable loitering munitions that that aren't a huge, uh, um, don't make a huge amount of problems, just, uh, you know, probably blow a side in, in a, uh, a house or something. I, I think that's a kind of thing. They're, they're kind of like the, I'm not sure what type of weapon they are, but they are a, a weapon that does that kind of thing. Right. Um, I hate to say this, but I dropped out again, but I heard every word. Could you make oh. me co-host again? Oh, <laughs> okay. this is not, this is not going to be good. So I hope Lane's going to be around if I drop out and carry on you're still um, co-host on from my viewpoint. oh am i oh okay yeah. thank you dear um uh, yes i, I, I had a question for Anne. oh sure put, sure. put, put your hand up joe oh you did it's been, it's been up did. it's been up um <laughs> why well, I, I didn't see it i dropped out <laughs> possibly possibly a naive question but the, when i first heard about the cluster munition sale i, I thought what would be in the country receiving the cluster munitions who's having a war on their territory, why would it be in their interest to accept these, these munitions and bomb their own land, which they have all intention of regaining back? Well, and the only- yeah. I yes. hadn't understood that they, were, they are, have been using them. So. Well, they- both sides have been using cluster munitions. Let's be okay. sort of honest about that. It's okay. clear that the Russians have been using a lot more cluster munitions and against civilians, which the Ukrainians generally are not. Um, actually, if if they're doing any real terrorizing, it's it's highly pre uh, more precise strikes. They they reserve the advanced munitions to uh, hit uh, high value targets. Um, They've dropped a couple of cruise missiles on people, on various people. But the point being is that cluster munitions will probably play a big factor in this counteroffensive, because as I just said, the the what you use them for in a military context is against defensive defensive works like trenches, et cetera. The the problem is that you have a you know a six hundred kilometer um, front line. And troops are really widely dispersed. So you don't use these unless you've got a relatively, um, you know, kind of clustered group of um, personnel in one place. So a single cluster bomb strike will take out a, you know, well, if you're lucky, a platoon or something, or, you know. Uh, so it, it, uh, these these weapons are terrorizing. All weapons are terrorizing, but I think it, it's mainly to be used to move the counter uh, counteroffensive forward, right. as opposed right. to the Russian use, which is to just simply scare people. Right. So uh, these hey, are Joe? The, these are the um, these are the same type of munitions that are still being dug up and still being exploded in Laos and Southeast Asia from the U.S. war and. Southeast Asia, correct? They were they were developed in the seventies um, for that kind of purpose. Um, they're they're slightly more advanced than the than the ones originally developed, and they so they have a little. As I said, the dud rate is actually very important because mm -hmm. the the U.S. has actually tried to reduce those numbers, mainly because. Um, we're one of the major culprits in in using these things, and uh, unfortunately, you're also used in more um, sort of neo-colonial conflicts. You know, you use these kind of things to clear large groups of people. Right, uh, Joe. I got a question for you. Um, that uh, that white stuff that you're mixing up. Did you get that from the White House? <laughs> 
because <laughs> I, I think it cost that, a pretty penny. This is yeah, I think I'm going to talk about cocaine bears now, right? So. Uh, oh, by the way, yeah, we, this we, this we, was a cornstarch slurry, not a cocaine slurry. Oh, okay, got it. Thank you, Joe. Looking a, good, looking good, Joe, as usual. Thank you. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, cocaine in the White House. There was, uh, I assume this is meant to distract from all the other uh, troubles that uh, uh, previous guy, uh, uh, the orange guy, uh, well, is they, having. They, they found it in the visitor section, right? I didn't know Hunter had to go through the visitor section to see his dad. Well, you know, I, I think they're probably going to release some information about saying exactly where he was. Uh, what, um, I mean, Biden, the the first family, was at Camp David for the whole weekend, so it wasn't them. Um, it, it was a, it was announced to be a large bag, but it, in fact, it's probably the size of a, a, I guess what, what the kids call a dime bag, and uh, that it was thrown into a, sort of a cubby on the level below the West Wing, which on the west side of the White House is a slightly lower area it's like two stories and this is the basement side but you know people the press has been misrepresenting it in a whole variety of ways it is yes near the sit room the situation room but the situation room is under construction so you know who knows whose bag it is in fact it could be somebody working on the reconstruction it it has it's a traffic area but uh, not really a traffic area that you get to unless you're on a private tour or something. That's what they say. That's kind of they've been working backwards and forwards on this. For example, the disinformation from the right wing. Um, it's the uh, I think she's the editor of the Federalist Journal, uh, big right wing journal that uh, that affects that has affected uh, the positioning of right wing judges. Uh, she decided to tweet out that uh, maybe it's Jill's stash. So, you know, you can see that th this is all acting on a kind of really weird area. Secret Service says they're going to have a, uh, a conclusion or a release report on it. They're going to close their investigation by Monday. So I think they're already closing in on whoever left it or some solution. Um, it's really, it's no big deal. And I, and I was assume it's an intervention made by someone to simply try and keep the hunter biden thing afloat well that'd be a loony bag in uh in canada <laughs> not a dime bag um <laughs> what it would be um wow that is that's uh, something else well you know it, it seemed to be problematic because then people started speculating about the party habits of the secret service uh, they tend not to use drugs. They tend to drink a lot. And and as we know in prior events that. So it'd they, be a boomer they, then, because um, right? Because like the, the younger party. ones would use uppers or something. In a situation room, you need something. Uh, who knows? Fast. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, who knows? <laughs> the articles that have come up uh, are kind of interesting because I, I hadn't realized that uh, FDR um, was given Coke. Uh, uh, a fair amount, but he didn't. He probably didn't realize he was being given coke, which was sort of interesting. It was oh, wow. mainly given to treat his sinuses. And the report, uh, I think it's a Guardian report that does uh, talking to a historian was uh, that uh, uh, even on December seventh, uh, FDR had a swab up his nose, but, oh but he God. may not have known that it was good. So he just wasn't um, a fan of Coca Cola. That might not have been the case. Indeed. Indeed. Um, there are a lot of other weird stories uh, of drug use, uh, um, JFK smoking pot, um, a lot of really interesting stories and, and probably only the tip of the iceberg really relative to kind of the, the dark history of the White House. So yeah. no, that's the, sure. the fact is, once you start, start getting this context, this isn't such a big deal. And you can see that it was only designed is a target of opportunities for, by someone and probably or someone incredibly stupid because there's surveillance cameras everywhere. And, um, you know, it's meant to prop up that Hunter Biden 
uh, mythology. Mm -hmm. That's true. And thank you so much. I think to Walt, you froze us for a second there. Are the wildfires closing in? This is a disgrace. <laughs> <laughs> I think Jim's here. <laughs> Good evening, Jim. Uh, hello. I, uh, hey, Jim. What, is it is it my knife skills? Are they off or something? What's the problem mm. here? <laughs> no, I think your your knife skills are really erotic, uh, to tell you the truth. <laughs> If you <laughs> want to get into it. Well, I think needs to cut. Hey, Walt, are you back? Sorry about that, Ann. Um, yeah, I'm back. You're still co-host. Oh, okay. Well, hey, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. We could do two hours with you uh, uh, very easy. And uh, thank you for spending your time with us on these Fridays. I really appreciate well, it. Thanks for having me here. And I uh, look forward to listening to uh, uh, Jim and Martha. Yeah, that, that'd that be good. And you can um, read uh, Anne in the Daily Costs. Uh, she writes a column on Ukraine, among, among other things. Just before you go, um, Professor John, I had this icon for him. Uh, he suggested <laughs> this one. Okay. Oh, there you go. There you there go. There you go. That that's right. So coming right right up, we're going to be with uh, with uh, Jim and Martha. So uh, let us uh, get them in. Whoops. Man. Oh wow. Um hi, 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 hi. Let's let's get you in here, boys and girls. Uh Jim and Martha. There you are. And hi Jim. Hi Martha. How are you? Hi, everyone. I'm hi. having internet issues today. So in case I disappear, just carry on. Okay, we'll take over the show because what's happened so far is an utter disgrace. Yeah, it is actually to be honest that's that's right i mean he he's going to use coriander leaf joe as you could see uh -huh. in, the, in the corner there i wasn't well, talking about the coriander it was... yeah just disgraceful do you want to give us an update on your meal so far there um coriander joe sure we're uh, nearly joe finished Cilantro. with all yeah we're nearly finished with all the prep Sorry to set you off with the cilantro Ooh. there, Walter. I yeah. Yeah, didn't realize you would come across. And so I had uh, a, a bunch of chili, uh, pickled chilies, and I have a couple fresh uh, bell pe uh, banana pepper, and then a uh, jalapeno type pe pepper, or chili, a scallion. And I turned this into a sweet and sour sauce. Sorry, diabetics, this one's going to go on the sweet side. But uh, you can maybe use agave. I don't know if that, that would uh, work as an alternative. Still a lot of sugar. Um, we've got, got the, the cauliflower with cocaine there. Yeah, the, the cocaine slurry cauliflower. Oh, sorry, cornstarch, cornstarch. We're about to deep fry those suckers and then get the sauce going at the same time and then transfer those once they're finished frying we'll toss them right in the sauce and they're ready to go well, that sounds good talk and, toss and them right our, in the and, sauce that's what my old man used to say and our coconut rice is finished that just took 15 minutes all done steaming there coconut Ooh. rice coconut rice yes. my friends with with the uh, pakistani mango over it we just got these prize prize mangoes in town in season Prize mangoes. That sounds like a boxer. My dad was a boxer in the Okanagan, used to box apples. That was his joke. So 
<laughs> not much of a joke. How are you, Jim and Martha? Did you guys have a good July 4th uh, weekend, long weekend, week? Sure. It, it kind of rained. It was very rainy, uh, unpatriotic weather. Mm -hmm. um, not too many fireworks in the rain, you know. That's probably we a good Americans thing. like to blow things up and explode things and deep fry celebrate and deep fry and yeah. deep fry is right we, we should get have to make some cluster fireworks you know <laughs> just to really show the public how war is done on this well, there, there was a number of people that were injured one woman was killed in uh, the middle of america somewhere one of those big big uh fireworks explosions went sideways into the crowd and was, took out a few was, people was it a gender reveal <laughs> big time. apparently that happened in the states and it just happened in vancouver where they set fire to a whole bunch of stuff in the no, middle did, of a did, drought did ann get into the uh, history of cluster, cluster bombs the history of them not that i know yeah. of oh you i know, posted a history of cluster bombs but go ahead Oh yeah, go ahead, yeah. Jim. Let's see if you're smarter than Ann. Oh, no, no, no. I... <laughs> well, the Nazis, you know, the Nazis. They had, they had the, their butterfly bombs. The the uh, oh, yes. bombed Finland with in 1938 or 39. 39, yes. And then, uh, uh, oh yeah, the Russians had the Molotov uh, cocktail bread baskets. They called them. Mm -hmm. Or the other, you know, and so well, the yeah. Finns called the Molotov cocktails. Yes, that's a, the Finns yeah, gave, yeah. gave it the name. And then we used them a whole bunch in Vietnam, obviously. And you probably went over that. Oh, sorry. Yes, I didn't. yes, I did. Yeah. So, yes, that that's where we are presently. Is that it, Jim? You got I more? just think I just think that if we're going to celebrate our country's independence, our sacred day of independence, we should make it more realistic. <laughs> 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 more fireworks more fireworks but just make them real you know real bombs and cluster bombs because as long as we keep funding all these wars they should get used to it oh, and indeed. uh yes yes that's true martha how's jim's garden growing it's growing big Excellent. it's um uh, yeah it we had so much rain though we lost well some of the flowers got a little mushy. I think we lost a, a tomatillo plant, maybe, and oh. um, a kale plant just oh. because of all the rain. But, yeah, that was tragic. It yeah. Was, uh, That's that. Do you eat kale? Right? Oh, yeah. I love kale. I don't. No. Yes, I eat kale. <laughs> what was that? What, what are you doing? You're, you're stretching your face. It makes you, makes you look younger. Oh, it does? Yeah, it's supposed to. Well, kale is good for your skin, apparently, or or maybe bad for it. That's why your skin. That's why you look younger. I'm not sure. I yeah. don't know. Yeah, right now. So, um, I, it's a pleasure to see you guys. Um, I had a couple of questions for you, Jim, but I don't know if I should ask them. I don't. I hardly know you, so. No, you can ask me anything. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm an open book. Are you? <laughs> I'm an open book. My heart is an open book. Okay. As I uh, scan through the audience and yeah, looking for other questions to save me. Uh, oh, geez, you guys are bad. Nobody has questions for Jim and Martha. I don't know why. So how's your, how's your breathing weather right now? How, how's the air conditions? We're about a four out of uh, 10 here. I think we're you're on a hundred. You're on a scale of a hundred. So you guys got to get to metric. I think we're on a, like 56 in the last few days on this okay. air quality AQI thing, which uh, is it's kind of hard to begin with because we're near a bunch of Kennebunk and the coast Kennebunk. of Maine has a lot of uh, swampy areas and, and, and wetland areas. So everything's kind of damp to begin with and rivers, right. rivulets, rivulets, creeks surrounding everything. Right. So it's already kind of uh, moldy piles of leaves. Are are you keeping up with the writer strike still? Because I guess the actors are going on strike as well. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. 
I hope everybody goes on, on strike at once. The UPS the, supposed to be going on a strike, aren't they? UPS, you say? Yeah, the, the Teamsters. Well, that would that would be good. Just shut the whole thing down, and we'll have to go back to the radio. Yeah. No, there's writers on radio. No, there's no writers on radio. They just do commercial jingles now. Right. What about uh, you? Got an eye on the um, on the election right now? There's been uh, who was it? Ann Applebaum uh, wrote an article on saying that Cornell West should run with the Democrats. I think it was Ann. Might have been somebody else, but. And am I uh, am I still you're, being hurt? You're, you're pretty frozen. You look good, though. I have to say that. <laughs> yeah. Well, good. it's the kale. <laughs> <laughs> the kale is just frozen. Yes, that's what happens when you not only eat it, but you uh, plaster it. You you pulverize it and plaster it all over your skin. Yeah, that's very offensive. What you're doing is just uh, offensive to uh, Martha's culture. I'm gonna look five years younger I mean, you know but um no thoughts on cornell west maybe joining the democratic um primary instead of the being in the i think he's going to be with the green party now yeah i think he's going to be in the green green party yeah, yeah I, so so did he leave the people's party or is he going to do both i i think he uh left the uh people's party but he did it in kind of a a uh uh what do you what am i cowardly way he didn't really condemn them oh okay <laughs> i think they were only available in one state to run anyways so I, yeah. i'm not sure why yeah. you would do that and they're having a little uh sexual uh, abuse uh scandal going on yes and uh well so uh, uh, more more of a me too scandal i think well i guess that's sexual abuse right yeah I guess so. And they're, right. you know, it's run by an anti-vaxxer, which is stupid. And Kennedy runs the Green Party? No, they're big <laughs> they're big fans of uh, Kennedy. Oh, okay. That's and Jimmy right. Dore. Now, now, who's not a fan of Jimmy Dore? I mean, like Good question. All that charisma. Um, the Green Party, I don't know, Anne, maybe if you you know it, are they in all 50 states? Were they only in a few They're states? They're currently in about 25 states, as far as I can tell states. from a mapping point of view. Um, so if you win all 25 states... People's Party was only one. Ah, if you win all 25 states, are you president? <laughs> well, there could be leverage if you go back to uh, uh, 2016 and the, the Libertarians and the Greens in Michigan. But That's true. We don't want to beat that dead horse. <laughs> Not at all. So, um, cocaine in the White House, Jim, Martha, what are your thoughts? More? Less? Does it help? I think they need more. Yeah. <laughs> what are Meth. we looking at with Jim's uh, video here? I don't know. I know my, we're looking at uh, my FaceTime camera focusing on the keyboard area of my laptop, which is hooked up to a bigger screen and the camera on top of the bigger screen, which is it for some reason is not uh, accessing this Zoom page. So I got to go into system settings. This is kind of like a... Let's say, sure listening to, the Zoom app, you can reverse. There's an icon to reverse the camera and Zoom there. You should be able see. to do it right in Zoom. Now it says I'm uh, on FaceTime camera. This is fascinating, by the way. This uh, what, what's happening? <laughs> I, I I I think we did this last week too. Is we get all this technical knowledge during our broadcast. So why, why have a conversation? Gotta pick it up learn. somewhere. Yeah, that's true too. Joe, what are you frying up there, buddy? What is that? The we cauliflower. The, the cauliflowers are in a hot oil bath, and I'm gonna make the sauce. What kind of sauce are you making, Joe? It's a pickled chili, sweet pickled chili sauce. Okay. Mm. Well, that's that's pretty good. Martha, anything new with you, dear? No. So <laughs> <Don't> much? <laughs> no, there's nothing new. Oh, I don't know what to talk about tonight. Well, I, 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 yeah, it's it's been a slow week, I guess. 
the weather's been really hot and sticky after it it was raining all week um and uh yeah there's just not a lot happening uh oh jim's coming back there yeah, Martha. there he is <laughs> he's in the picture hey you got to go up a little more there buddy i or can't just... well, you're so demanding i can't <laughs> yeah. the, the, a professional the, broadcast out here there's something wrong with my brio uh camera and it sucks big wow. wang and Sorry it's ridiculous. To hear it. that's a nice mic i like your mic though i have to admit that's a nice mic where is that a spotlight it's a it's a mic it's a oh, it it's is. a blue mic oh well, a blue ball there we go uh more technical to, knowledge as they used to call frank sinatra old old blue balls <laughs> okay well you know there's um i don't think there's such a thing as free tv anymore except on youtube and this is all free this is all free and you know anything new with you jim this week i guess martha would have known so it's been a boring week there you go been, well you know yeah. we we're exhausted from the heat and the all right humidity we're not used to the heat yeah that's really it's very yeah has it been it been hot out there the last three days have been pretty warm like in the high 80s whoa yeah that's hot. <laughs> <laughs> chilly <laughs> Have you experienced the Canadian uh, smoke yet? The forest fires from Canada, or do they bypass you? Still? I think they they bypassed us uh, because we had so many so much. You're, you're my early over. warning system. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's true, and we're still having fires out here. I think we're up to I forget 793 fires. Did you know that wow. the fires keep growing in the or keep growing? keep going in the winter time too out here in canada they go underground they're in the um uh muskeg and they burn and then come spring they come alive again that's like a mine fire i i suppose um it's like in the, in virginia don't they have these uh mine fires where the coal keeps yes. burning throughout the well wasn't that yeah. bethlehem yeah, Didn't they in Pennsylvania? You don't have to bring religion in this, you know. I'm, I'm, just... not, I'm not, but uh they they've got that coal coal fire that's coal mine fire that's been going for are we at a hundred years on that thing now? Or 70? And it, your, your, your whole country is like a big tire fire. No, in <laughs> Pennsylvania. You you have a mine fire, I believe. Does anybody oh. Okay, whatever. Anyways, so uh, we had a question last week on permafrost and how does the permafrost affect things? And um, so coming from the uh, the American, um, I don't know if it's the FDA or climate control, uh, permafrost layer thawing can lead to several impacts on people and the environment. As it thaws, it can turn into a slurry that cannot support the weight of the soil and vegetation above it. Infrastructures such as roads, buildings, and pipes could be damaged as permafrost thaws. Uh, interesting thing, too, the more north you go, uh, the less trees there are. So you lose your trees, right? And um, and it's all, all the permafrost conditions. Well, that's Wait. depressing. Well, July 3rd, we had, had the, the warmest day in the world. And I think it was about... 16 degrees celsius somewhere around there but that includes the arctic and the antarctic in with well, the calculation and 89 degrees in maine we're going to keep having mm -hmm. uh the hottest days in the world one right after another right <laughs> so why are we looking at your fingers jim <laughs> yeah. is that palm olive you're soaking in no. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Since the I can't fix my camera. Well, it's this pretty good likeness. It ain't a moose, though. Right. It's an ancient creature. It is over it's eleven million years. Eleven million years of uh, evolution. One of the and laziest creatures it, in the it, world. It, no, and a no, fussy no, no. Eater too, and a fussy eater. Fussy. Well, 
they perfected their evolution uh, 11 million years ago and they haven't changed since right it's it's an amazing creature well thank you for bringing that up so we can discuss it but i have something interesting (laughs) um we were talking about the environment remember um back in the day like in the great lakes the um geez the phosphates from the soap and the detergent were uh bringing algae up right and killing the fish and yes. then we we had the hole in the ozone layer right with the uh martha's hairspray caused it right and we yeah. got the chlorophor fluorocarbons and uh now we have a hole over the antarctica which is kind of healing uh, apparently I'm not going to say CO2, but it, it's something. So instead of, if we concentrate on pollution, especially the right wingers are going, there's no such thing as climate change, right? If we concentrate on pollution, that would help the environment. And would that be a better message to the right wingers? Because we've seen it works. Concentrate on the pollu- pollution to please right wingers. Is that well, yeah. you know, the right wingers are going, there's no such thing as climate change yet, you know, up north is melting. And and well, yeah. so my my argument is if we concentrate on pollution, we'll uh, kill two birds with one stone. I just you can you... talk to a right winger about the smoke coming out of a chimney snack, right? Stack, right? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, you would think that they care. I don't think they care. Yeah, I, think I don't it's think a, they care. It's part They're of God's into plan. The campfires too. They they don't care. Leaf burning. A lot of leaf burning going on here in Maine. Big piles of leaves. People just fucking pile their leaves up and and. Well, my neighbor burnt plastic in their fire pit the other day, and I give him heck there because I don't want to breathe that crap in, uh, which yeah. is illegal. Yeah, to I do had. That, right? I had a neighbor that used to do that too. He didn't yeah. care. Was that my dad? He was an elderly man in his eighties. Well, yeah, and he just didn't care. He figured, might have been my dad. Yeah, they used to burn all the garbage in in British Columbia where he lived. So. Greatest generation. They don't care. Yeah, they didn't care. But no, you have you know they, they they did revert some of the a lot of these EPA rules to pre nineteen seventy. Uh, status so i guess people can do what they want to do now well they they invented cluster munitions i mean the greatest generation there you go but they had a job to do and they went and did it and (laughs) that's what band of brothers is all about i urge you to watch band of brothers because every 30 seconds is a horrific scene of slaughter and you won't go be able to go to sleep right they fought for our freedoms to burn whatever we want and to put pipelines wherever you want my my dad part of the greatest generation flew b-29 bombers 36 missions over japan had to bail out three times three crash landings and he climbed out of smoking wreckage in 1945 so that one day he could criticize my career choices. And that's what <laughs> the greatest generation is about, ladies and gentlemen. And listen to your dad is what you're... Joe, you're glazing a oh. pan. <laughs> yep. Or, the exciting part now, we got the crispy, crispy, crunchy, no longer limp cauliflower tossed it in the right in the pan get it all coated and then ready to serve ready to serve oh that looks great you're gonna put parmesan cheese on that afterwards boy not sure about that one (laughs) oh my nose is running from all the chilies Oh, I like that. That looks good. That does look good, actually. You better throw a little MSG on there, too, so it tastes good. Martha's not oh, a big fan care, of cabbage. We, we, took, we took care of that earlier. Oh, yeah. Hey, the oh, no. But it's fried. I'll eat it. 
That looks like thimerosal. I have no idea. So, so Jim, were you going to write another book in the future here about obituaries? No. Yes, I have. A, I have a bunch of. Uh, I have a bunch of uh, uh, finished obituaries that I haven't published yet. Yes. Would you write an obituary for this show? I don't know if I could write one for this show. You know, it's. Uh, <laughs> are, what, are, are you? Are you, guys, are you holding off until I'm telling you Kissinger is not going to die? Is that what you're holding off for, for the next publishing? No, oh, he'll he'll kick off soon enough. You you can bet on that. <laughs> what are you guys you thinking of? Uh, are, are you disillusioned with how this show is going? No, it's not at all. Something no, going on? Not at all. It's just the internet providers are crap. I changed my internet provider. I've dropped out three times. And Lee has had problems in the past. I don't know. I don't know anymore. Well, I'd rather have a coin-operated internet. That way I know it'll be there. You know, magic the, fingers. That's right. Just kind of going that. off the rails over here, too. I was wondering when I was making the sauce, it's like something's missing. Something's missing. It's too overly sweet. Where's the sourness? Not enough pickled chilies. I had enough vinegar, so I said I'll slice a lemon and just quickly do it when the whole plan was to use tamarind. I had some tamarind paste here. Mm. So that's what the, the other secret ingredient in there was, tamarind. Well, oh, well. you, you chefs are, are really creative, and you can use anything in a pinch. So. Uh, just to cook over here, just to cook. Just to cook. That's right. Well, so it's per. per that guy in Russia there, the hot dog vendor. So he's a waiter. Yeah, so. Uh-oh. It's happened again. He's frozen up like Jaime the robot. Oh, no. Time to open that, the present. That was an old reference to uh, get smart. Jaime the robot. Are you going to cut open the uh, mango now? Yeah, this is a very special mango. Um, there's one of the popular ways the kids love to eat it is that when they're when they're ripe like this, you can basically gently squish and massage it so that you basically juice the pulp and you do it all over the body, being careful not to break the skin. And then you, with your, your tongue, you bite the tip out, like you do a cigar, and then you suck all the guts out. And it's a nice little handy, uh, self-contained self uh, dessert. They're wonderful. But this time I'm gonna slice along the seed and just carve the one side of it out, to put over a plate of rice. You know, your hand actions, uh, every time I've, we've watched you uh, prepare a meal, your hand actions mm -hmm. are not unlike a professional a hand person, uh, like uh, Vanna White or on Let's Make a Deal. They would always have these nice little. The price is right. Yeah. This is our featured fruit for the evening. Thank you for that compliment. Well, I didn't say it was a good thing. Oh. <laughs> So it, yeah, the, it's a, those, it's a those, those ring those ring advertisements uh, haven't been uh, knocking at my door. So, so the featured fruit is a Pakistani mango, is what you're saying? Yes. Yes. Well, we're we're happy happy for you. As I I look forward. So okay, so when's this book going to come out, uh, Jim? Do we got to push you? What, what's the scoop here, buddy? Yeah, as soon as I uh, put my mind to it, he's what's on it going to take? He's on strike. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. I'm on strike. <laughs> Even though I yes, that's well, why I, was... I don't have a script tonight, Walter. Jeez, that's fine. We... On Solidarity. We Solidarity. we enjoy just kibishing or kiboshing with you guys, so that that's fine. You don't have to. You don't have to put on a show for us. I don't have to perform. No, you okay. well. A little bit is nice, but maybe my, a song and dance. That's right. So, Joe, okay. um, are you uh, almost finished your meal? Is that what you're saying? 
Joe. Are you trying to rush me out the door? Or I am, I am not, or? but speaking of rush, I wonder oh. if he's if he's in the oh. audience tonight. Oh, I'm almost there. Okay. Well, take your time, Joe. That's that's fine. Um okay, tell me about your life, uh, Jim. Well, uh you got <laughs> <laughs> my life. Well, yeah. as you can see, I worship koala puppets. What uh, happened Martha, to your guys' uh, hand puppets? How come Martha and here? I, we have a nice collection of them, and we're still, we're still, yeah. I, we're we didn't we're see that, them. Martha. Can you can you show it to us? Oh, sorry. I mean the puppet. What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so oh uh, man so where, where can you find these puppets yeah. on on instagram was it or twitter or where did you have them no they're they're vintage actually they're uh probably from 1980 jim is that where they're from yes uh, but in korea but but, but out they're of, made uh, in korea if that's but vintage that means i'm antique so designed in uh new jersey and, but I, th I think Wally was talking about, hey, you, can we see videos of these fellas? Yes, yes, very good. Jim, Jim is yes. a Jim is the sharpest knife in the, <laughs> in the in the drawer tonight. They've actually recorded a song. Um, it's on up on YouTube on my YouTube channel. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Okay. We'll What's the song to... called? I love eucalyptus. <laughs> <laughs> we have two songs we have two songs when it was uh oh the uh, koala and wombat song yeah and, and uh, uh i love eucalyptus is their second smash hit i yeah. love eucalyptus virtually everything uh song we're gonna have a bunch of songs are you uh, by these guys and they're all gonna uh, deal with leaves eucalyptus leaves uh napping and uh fecal pap yes Ooh, dude we're working on the album and yeah, the, I, the rock I'd work, opera. I'd work harder, Jim, on the titles. So <laughs> if I was you. Jim and Martha, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, thanks. Oh, you're thanks. kicking us out already? Well, no, you can stay as long as you want. Actually, if you want to interact with Rush, that would be good. Rush, are you here? <clears throat> well, one of us is here. I don't know where the faults Mr. Limbaugh is. <laughs> but I'm here coming You've to you live from limbo. hell ten, 20 miles straight down among the other condemned falsely condemned conservatives and true Americans here we go Hi. you know Rush I lost you and I'm sorry I did where oh. are you there you are, right there. Uh, allow to multi pin. Man, tech in this episode is off the chain. Where is Snurdly when you need him? Snurdly, where are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, I don't have a lot of time for this. My schedule is packed. So ask the questions, let me know what you want to know. Are you talking to us? Yeah. Are you a smooth brain? <laughs> yeah. What kind of leaves do you like? Well, I'm, I will say, uh, looking at you two, my uh, interview subjects have definitely uh, declined since I've been condemned here to hell. Uh, but both of you seem to resemble uh, Hillary Clinton on a particularly bad day. Yeah, I don't get that reference. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm not a problem solver. I'm not a problem solver, and I sleep uh, 14 hours a day and eat four pounds of leaves. Uh, do you do any of that? Well, I think you spoiled fecal pap. <laughs> I try to avoid vegetables whenever possible. I prefer a diet of red meat, uh, preferably only slightly cooked. 
hard to get down here in hell, but if you know the right people, you can send the right payment up up near you guys, and uh, a live animal can be slaughtered, and the entrails as well as the good bits can be sent down here. So I can have an occasional good meal. Otherwise, unfortunately, it is largely vegetarian provisions, but that's because I'm in hell. Yeah. I got a question for you. I got a question for you. Yes, Mr. Fluffy Face. Hey, fuck off! Look, um, I got a question for you. How? How do you keep a wombat in suspense? All right, I'll bite. How do you keep a wombat in suspense? Very funny. <laughs> dead air. Dead air. <laughs> oh, freaking I do not ball. consider myself a wombat. If I had to choose an animal, it would probably be a cougar or a lion, or I suppose the proper ele- the proper animal would be an elephant. No, I don't get that. We don't have elephants in Australia. Here. Yeah, that's pretty stupid. Hey, how many hours a day do you sleep? Well, down here in hell, our schedules are kind of reversed. We work all night, and then we sleep for a few hours during the day. Now, I have my radio show that, well, when I was on the air back up on Earth, was only three hours. Now it's 12 hours without a pee break, uh, unfortunately. But that's because I'm in hell. Well, rush, uh, rush from hell, and that's what uh, when when Lane hears rush, that's what he thinks he's in. So, thank you very much, Rush. Um, you're very welcome. Very enjoy. You actually you're a much nicer fellow dead than alive. Has anyone ever said that? Well, okay. I appreciate that. Please, <laughs> though, don't tell anyone I spoke to any of you liberals. Uh, if word got back uh, down here, I would be uh, flagellated even more than I am on a regular basis and not in a pleasant way. Don't eat cauliflower, then you won't get flag- flagellated. <laughs> Just a thought. Hey, Jim and Ann. Uh, Jim and Ann, sorry. Jim and Martha. Do yeah. my favorite. Can we, um, can we show your one of your I love a loop? eucalyptus leaves video would you mind that sure. oh no go ahead yeah, go yeah. Okay, j- yeah. J- just sign this waiver and uh and we'll we'll do that oh okay In the eucalyptus trees, I'm a koala. The eucalyptus trees, eating eucalyptus leaves, sleeping all day long. I'm a smooth brained marsupial, and I'm not a problem solver.
Yeah. Um. Yeah. But what the fuck was that? <laughs> I don't remember signing up for that. <laughs> Here's my manager. <laughs> okay, looks like Wally's frozen again, so we're gonna take over. <laughs> we're gonna make you know, we're gonna make everybody's lives here a living hell for the next twenty minutes. It's you're a new gonna, name, Mr. Christian. You're just, gonna, you're just gonna look at these fucking puppets and you're gonna <laughs> wonder what the hell happened to these two people over the last three years during the pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> so you say you're koalas, but they look more like sloths. <laughs> So, so did you guys get a chance to uh did, did it cut out halfway through because my internet dropped no i think it went through the whole thing yeah so the whole yeah. thing oh, yeah. wow. two and a half minutes of gold yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> it is that that was nice and you guys have a have a couple more songs up there do you i think we have uh one other song about uh koalas uh, and wombats Koalas and wombats. Uh, Dr. Yeah. Wombat would actually like that very much as I scan um, the participant list here. Um, Joe, you want to give us your final yes. solution on your on your meal here? That looks yes. I, yeah, actually, yeah. this is something I could use. I could I could eat. This is the uh, this is the first thing I could eat, I think. Oh, aside from the coriander, coriander, aside from the coriander, I think you'd be cool with this. Cool as a cucumber. Yes. That's right. Yeah, green onions yeah. in there, parsley maybe. You know that would be yeah. nice. Yeah, we we got the crispy fried cauliflower and a sweet chili sauce. Okay, nice and crunchy, spicy, right. super hot. And then I made coconut rice. You can see it underneath the sliced mango, it's smooth and creamy like velvet. Okay, and then I put put a little sprinkle of sumac on there. Sumac, it's you a, say. Um, do you, not, do the, you, not the poison so much. That's right. Do you uh, grill um, romaine at all, lettuce, that sort of thing? I don't have a grill here, but I'm very fond of cooked lettuce. Yes. I, I cook it on stream very often. Okay. In fact, I um, can do it next week. I think that would be good. Yeah, no, no coriander leaf. I'm just checking in with uh, Cameron and Charity. Talk amongst yourselves. Are there any, any questions uh, up there? It says, welcome to the most boringest show on the earth on YouTube. Oh, come on now, Walter. <laughs> well, okay. Not the guest. It's <laughs> just, just me. I'm not feeling well and neither is my internet. I keep dro I've keep i dropped four times uh, four times. during the show. You should see a doctor about that. Yes. Keep dropping during well, the middle of a show. I keep well, uh, well, I switched providers and I'm thinking of switching back. Um, the other one got bought out and uh raised their prices, and I says, I'm going for the cheapest one I could find, and by golly, I found it. <laughs> and this is where I'm at right now. Can you mention the name? I switched from Shaw to Telus. Shaw's been bought out, bought out by Bell. And I've been with Shaw since 2000. And I asked them, will you match Telus's um, price? And they said, no. I said, okay. And here we are. And th they knew. They knew. They're laughing at me right now. They said, good luck. Loyalty. You'll be back. That's what they said. We don't have any choices down here in America. We just have a uh, spectrum spectrum yeah uh the uh internet for the stars sure. speculum right. oh that looks wow mango and uh grilled cauliflower oh and what rice co coconut rice All right, fried cauliflower mm. oh, easiest yeah. way to a non-vegetarian's heart i guarantee if you give them crispy <laughs> fried cauliflower drench it in salty sugary spiciness they'll dig it maybe a couple extra sprinkles of msg will do the trick too you're hooked on the same account will you send it can you send me some mm. 
New York. So crunchy. That's right. That's right. Um, thank you, Joe. You are a heck of a guy. You're and, welcome. Okay. And uh, any questions for Joe? No questions. Oh, I can smell that from from my porch. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you, Joe. And I mm -hmm. wonder if DPA is here. I don't think we're going to have Charity and Cameron tonight. Uh, they're probably out of cell range. They're um, walking for Indigenous rights for murdered and uh, missing Indigenous people. And we had a had a, uh, a a bad thing happen in Winnipeg is in a private landfill. Um, two uh Two, three people got buried in there, and the government doesn't want to go in and and find them because of health concerns of asbestos and methane. And uh, we were we're going to talk. Now, about were that. they moited and buried? Yes. Or accident? These were purposeful. No, no accident. Jumping. No, mm. it's a pri private landfill, and um, and murdered uh, indigenous happens in America too, as well, and. Mm. Uh, up in Canada, and if you follow Charity's uh, Facebook page, and there'll be a link in there, in the show notes, um, it's amazing as they go province to province, how many other people are um, are missing mm. as well. Like Charity's uh, boyfriend went missing eleven or twelve years ago, yeah. <laughs> and they've never found him, and it's. Uh, is, so is they tragic. basically could tragic. be looking for a mass grave somewhere. No. Or these all independent or no, individual murders. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And in this case, it was in a private landfill in Winnipeg, and it's going to cost something like $144 million to dig up, uh, the provincial government says, to find these bodies. Mm -hmm. And um, they said, we won't stop the federal government from putting in money to find them. But they said they can't afford to do so uh, because of the health risks. Yet the reserve or or the band uh, did a study on safety and presented it prior to the findings of the provincial government. So it's a shame that they can't be here. We'll catch up with them uh, next week. And Dave, DPA, how are you doing, my friend? Hello, Uncle Walty. How are you? Un Uncle Walty. Uh, Jim and Martha, how are you? Hi, Dave. Oh, hello. Nice, nice to see you. How come yeah. Jim's camera is off? What, uh, are you, are you I'm shy? having I'm having difficulties, technical difficulties. Uh, don't right. mind me or us. Very sorry for all of this. How's the weather in Maine? I went to sticky up there. Hot. It's nice. It's cooled off. Um, we have a bit of cloud cover right it's now. Quite muggy here. Yeah. Yeah. It has been though the last three days. We're pretty yeah. warm. It's yeah. up in the eighties. Breaking them records. Yeah. <laughs> How you been, Walter? How's how's the great north? Is he frozen? He's frozen, He's frozen. again. Wow. Uh, you can take the man out of the north, but you can't take the north out of the man. <laughs> They're gonna uh, dig dig him up a thousand years from now yeah. and be be able to recreate him like one of those mastodons they find in Alaska. He's in the permafrost. That's right. Yeah, yeah, his icy heart is starting to catch up. But hey, well, there he goes. <laughs> Bye, Walter. And there he is. Hello, Walter. Um, hey, uh, carry on. Uh, thank you. I yeah, understand. I mean, I'm not discouraged for the Autonomous Collective. Hey, the first fish on the beach was not exactly Fred Astaire. Am I right? I have no idea what that means. First fish on the beach. Not, not, Fred Astaire. Not, not, not ringing a bell. I, I don't understand. I knew he was a creationist. See that? No, there you go. <laughs> uh, DPA, can, uh, do you got um, something on the schedule or could you advise yeah, us? Yeah, let me look it up? up. What's going on tonight? Okay, yeah, That's sure. Why, why be ready, right? You know. I'm ready. <laughs> I just thought you wanted to flatter me or something. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Your show already happened, so that's on you. Oh, and what a show it was. And, uh, yeah, there's nothing happening at 9 o'clock, but there's always something happening when there's nothing happening here at the Autonomous Collective because we can't stop talking to each other. 
And then at uh, 9.30, guided tour of the Twilight Zone with Prof. John, need I say more. Uh, 1 a.m., uh, late night safety meeting with Henchman 21, watching the Venture Brothers discussing pop culture references, current events, correlations, real world character translations, themes, etc. through any lens desired. Have your nibbles and drinks close by, tuck in. Wow. So is there something always going on uh, over the weekend? Yeah, with this? we just run the Zoom straight through till it crashes. In fact, we do cringe till it crashes starting at 11. Mm -hmm. And then we pick up the next Zoom, which is on Sunday, and that goes into Sunday night, which includes Hammer and Sickle, which is probably going to be pretty lame this week because I'm away. Uh, mm -hmm. Then there's a weekly Marks meeting at 3. And then really? uh, we usually all gather in at five o'clock for the Colombo cult watch party. What if you're a progressive uh, conservative like myself? Um, you really got to pick a lane, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, but there's gardening, there's shop talk, right? Yeah. So whatever oh. you bring to the table, you okay. know, there's, there's plenty of people full of talent and uh, they're just interested in life. There yeah. is. There yeah. is too. And, and there's always and, discussions to be had. You can always plop a subject and you're always going to get uh, opinions from the, from the people. So right. people come, it's like, uh, it's like a hub for our right. weekends. We, we and, uh, and the Republicans uh, actually, um, uh, yeah. a lot of them take courses on Marx. Uh, so they want to be able to understand it so they can screw all the liberals. That's <laughs> my understanding. So. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, at least at least uh, you know how you're getting screwed. That's nothing that's, else. that's true. Yeah. Okay, well, you know, it's been a slice. This internet is is um, is not helped out much. Thank you very much, DPA, Martha, and Jim. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Joe. Thank you, and Lee. Everybody, have I a think wonderful I'm, weekend. I'm uh, there was one other thing on the schedule I wanted to mention. Oh. Um, Saturday afternoon, we've got, well, first in the morning, we've got a couple readings. Dave does a Red Eye Live reading at nine in the morning, followed by Rick doing a reading and uh, interpretive dance at, a, at 10. And then at uh, 12 o'clock noon, we're trekking with Professor John to look at classic Star Wars episodes. Uh, a discussion, a discussion trek, after that. Our trek, my and God, Joe. Did I, I didn't say. I said trekking. Did you I said Star Wars. Yeah. Trek, trek. Oi, oi, right. uh, But tentatively, I haven't quite heard back from her. This is Susanna. At two o'clock tomorrow afternoon, she's doing a segment called Bird Con Conservation How the Bluebird Was Saved from extinct Extinction. Anyone can become a citizen scientist monitoring a bluebird nest box or another selected avian species. And she'll be telling us about that. Way, way to and drag the at, audience. Four thirty, we've got uh, Valley Vox is doing a special presentation from Frankie C again. And then, like uh, Dave mentioned, at uh, eleven o'clock, it's cringe until it crashes. Try. Dave, it sounds like there's a lot going on here in this community, don't you think? We stay pretty busy. All right. So people should look at the links uh, underneath. And Absolutely. thank you very much for joining uh, us today. Uh, despite Just the come hang with us. Yeah, come hang. Yeah, <laughs> we're sure you're interesting as we are. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs>